DC to DC power converters have direct access to our MCMs, and the printed circuit board is not required to carry all the current from, from board edge to board edge. Another key technology of SV2 is a spray evaporative cooling. For example, our processor chip, because of the custom blocks, we have approximately a 45 watt per centimeter squared heat flux density on, on the pro processor chip. And to get a point of reference, that's approximately the same heat um, flux density that you have on the space shuttle uh, re-entry on, on the tiles. And what I have here is the spray cap that delivers the spray cooling to our MCM. What you see here is four spray nozzles per processor chip and one spray nozzle for the cache chip. The cache chip runs about 40 watts. The processor chip runs around 100 watts. So as you can see, we have a pattern that matches the MCM. This gets mounted directly onto the MCM. It's sealed and tested at the MCM vendor. Underneath this manifold assembly, we have our, our MCMs. There's four of these located on the node module. And there's four spray caps that go on top of it. The floor nerd comes into the manifold, into the liquid feed port on the spray cap. And then once it goes through and gets sprayed onto the surface of the MCM and goes through phase change, it comes out as a mixed phase fluid. The mixed phase fluid then gets transferred through the manifold to two hoses due to the change in, in volume of the flow and goes into the return system, into the chassis. The spray evaporative cooling technique we're using for SV2 is a much more efficient way to use fluorinate to cool a system. For example, on a T932, it requires about 180 gallons a minute to cool that system. In comparison, a full-up liquid-cooled SV2, which has 16 node modules, or 64 MCMs, requires only 16 gallons a minute. Another key technology in the SV2 project is, is our compliant interconnect. What was required is that we get the 3,800 connections between the multi-chip module down to the printed circuit board. Each connection and the compliant interconnect requires about 40 grams of force to engage. You add all those up and it requires approximately 350 pounds of force to fully engage the multi-chip module down to the printed circuit board. So what I'd like to do now is, is, is assemble the different technologies, demonstrate how they get assembled into the module. What we have here is a, a backer plate that goes on the back of the PC board. Because of the 350 pounds of force, we don't want to push the MCM through the, to the PC card. This represents what the PC board would be on the back of the, that's placed on there. Then the compliant interconnect is mounted to the PC board. This will be permanently mounted to the PC board. And then the MCM, as I stated before, comes prepackaged, sealed from the vendor, and that will then get put onto the compliant interconnect. The 350 pounds of force is then applied to engage the, the compliant interconnect to the PC card. Springs and C-clamps are then installed to hold this in place. We've taken more advantage of our suppliers with SV2. For example, IBM with a multi-chip module technology, the substrate and the chips that are connected to the substrate and the spray cooling, we've really leveraged our suppliers for their expertise. IBM has a great track record for quality and reliability, and that's indicative of our SV1 product. We have, I believe, uh, 8,000 plus hours per system on the average of reliability, which is great for the supercomputer line of products. It's the SV2 air-cooled chassis which rejects all the heat that's generated within the cabinet to the surrounding air. In the air-cooled cabinet, we put in four node modules. So if we have more than one cabinet in the system, we'll actually add two router modules that go up in the top to communicate between the two chassis. This is the SV2 liquid-cooled chassis. What differentiates this from the air-cooled chassis? is that all the heat that's generated internally gets dissipated to facility water. There are eight node modules and four router modules in this half of the chassis. It's symmetrical about the center plane, so there's another card cage on the opposite side of this mainframe. We call this the V half, and the other half is called the W half. You can put up to 1,024 of these uh, node modules together to build a system with up to 4,000 processors. 
The interconnect itself is somewhat complicated, but it consists of 32 independent slices of networks for very high bandwidth. Each one of these slices uses uh, a router chip that is uh, typically designed to be the sole interconnect of a multiprocessor. We put 32 of them together in parallel to have a very high bandwidth interconnect tying together these modules. So you end up with a system design that has a, at its basic level the multi-stream processor, then it has nodes which have four of the multi-stream processors sharing a high bandwidth local memory subsystem, and then it has a global memory subsystem that's tied together with this very high bandwidth, low latency interconnect. And all of the global memory of the machine is accessible to all processors. Crate designs all of their systems with what we call a product team, which has representatives from every functional area. And they work together as a team to make sure that the design is going to be effective not only from a performance point of view, but also from a service point of view and a manufacturability point of view. The SV2 is a highly manufacturable and testable product. I believe we've leveraged the right mix of standard surface mount assembly and proprietary leading edge processes to differentiate it. When we get our boards in from our printed circuit board suppliers, we'll do a number of tests on them to make sure that they're the product that we really want to have running down our production line. Initially, we'll do some electrical verification on the boards to make sure that the impedance and other electrical attributes are there. We'll also do some visual inspection to make sure that the mechanical attributes are there as well. We've got a good balance of high performance leading edge PC board, but also a very manufacturable PC board. Uh, this was very key to keep the cost of the system down, but also to achieve the kind of interconnect required for high performance. After the surface mount technology is applied, we then put the edge flex onto the printed circuit board. These are the components very similar to previous products that we've used here at Cray. The chip packaging and mechanical implementation of the SV2 is key to getting the system to fit into the footprint that it fits into. So it gives you two advantages. One, by using the multi-chip modules, the MCMs, we were able to get four processors on the same board, which gives them access to a shared memory in a very high bandwidth and low latency manner. So we were able to get a lot of computational power onto a, onto a single board, which gives you the power about of a full 32 processor Cray T90 on a single processing board. So the packaging technology there was key. The packaging technology, both on the board and between the boards, and the cooling technology also allows you to get a tremendous amount of computational power in a small footprint on the machine room floor. In about a 4 by 8 um, space on your machine room floor, you get 64 processors, each running at 10 plus gigaflops. So you get a tremendous amount of computational density. And when you compare this to the football field-sized arrays of machines that you see on these large clusters, uh, you can see a tremendous savings um, just in terms of the building infrastructure that you need. Uh, you can also imagine the uh, in improvements in maintainability of having a compact, well-engineered design as opposed to cobbling together hundreds or thousands of, of processors uh, spread out across a huge machine room floor. What we've done uh, for SV2 that we haven't done to the extent on other products is we're allowing for an extensive test vehicle uh, period of time and a prototype period of time and pilots. We have multiple systems that represent a huge R&D investment and it's probably about 20 months, approximately 20 months of time that we're just doing validation and qualification. This is a Cray Qualification Lab. This is a place where we actually test our hardware components. As you can see in the background, we have lots of chambers to do testing, thermal chambers, humidity chambers. We also have examples of piece part components and large assemblies. On each multi-chip module, there's eight die. Each die has a thermal couple on it, and we are able to monitor the temperature on each die through this data acquisition system. We also do uh, uh, up to 6,000 power cycles. That's our goal for reliability on this system, which equates to about 3,000 power on off cycles for the field customer. We feel very confident at this point in time that we've uncovered all of the risks for uh, introducing and producing the SV2. So to summarize the Cray SV2, it's, an, it's a complete overhaul of the traditional Cray vector architecture. We have a brand new instruction set that's been significantly modernized. We are implementing the processors in CMOS with a modern microarchitecture, 
register, reordering, out of order execution, etc. And we built in scalability features that have not been present in any Cray system before.